Hello and welcome to this video, that, which is from chapter 13. So let's begin. Chapter 13. We're going to actually cover ch uh, problems 1 and 2. So there's problem 1. I can click there to get the Excel data file. I'm not going to do it that way though. Um, it actually gives us a scatter plot and an equation. And let's go ahead and see how uh, to get those numbers using Excel. So I'm just going to copy, or I'm going to highlight, then copy that with the uh, Control C because I'm using a, a Windows machine. It'd be Command C for Mac people, and hit Control V to paste. So there's the data. I'm just going to clean things up, deleting some columns that don't need to be there, and inserting a column so that I can actually put the title there. This is Direct Labor Cost DLC. And this is batch size. I could do, yeah, probably BS not going to go. So I'll just go size. There, that's better. I'm going to get rid of that column. Delete. So got the data into Excel. Um, notice that this is the Y and this is the X. It's going to be kind of important. Let's maximize this, highlight the data. Insert chart dots. Uh, I don't have much of anything there, so I'm going to choose one of these. That's a nice one. Hmm. This is the DLC along the x axis, but we're told that DLC is the y. Okay, so we need this. This is being read as the X. First column is the X. Second column is the Y. Now, there's probably some way in Excel to tell Excel, hey, make this column the X and this the Y. But, or, or this the Y and that the X. I don't know how to do that. So I'm going to start over. I'm going to copy and just move this over. Get rid of that first column. So now the what comes first is the size, which is the X, and second is the DLC, which is the Y. And I always find it easier X, Y. Charts. There it is again. Uh, that'll be a good one. Uh, so there we are. We've got, well, I can pull that all the way out there, our line of best fit and our R squared value. Oh, darn, I just deleted it. However, do I get it back? Click on the line, right click, format trend line. Make sure it's linear, display equation on chart, and display R squared value. We are, so there we go. Okay, so we got a 10.146 times X. Let's pop back over. 10.146 times x, and we've got a y of uh, 18.488, 18.488. So that's how um, Connect got those numbers. Kind of cool. Make that bigger for no reason. So we need to calculate b1 and b0, b1 being our slope, 10.146, and b0 being our y-intercept, 18.488. Oh, we need to round this to four decimal places, but it's only giving it to us in three. That's problematic. We could go back and do the calculations by hand. We can find some way of getting Excel to give that to us. Let's see. Can I specify numbers? Aha, number, category, number. And instead of two decimal places, I want four. Ha! 10.1463 is B1. And B0 is 18.4875. So we kind of got around connect. Interpret the meanings of B0, which is the y-intercept, and B1, which is the slope. 
The question is, does the interpreter not that one? And I'll explain in just a moment. Uh, B1 is the cost, because it's the y value, or the estimated y value, when the x variable is 0. B0 is the y-intercept. It's the value of y when x is 0. Boom. Does this make practical sense? And the answer is no, not really. Because let, let, let's think about this for a second. B0 is the value of y, the labor cost, when the value of x, the batch size, is 0. So when you have no batch size or you're not doing anything, B0 is going to be the cost, the labor cost of doing nothing. No. B1 is the estimated, since B1 is positive, B1 is going to be the estimated increase. And remember, the slope is how much the y increases as the x increases by 1. It's the rise over the run. So it's the increase in labor cost for every one unit increase in the batch size. Rise over run. So let's write the least squares prediction equation. So this will be the to four decimal places. We already did that. So that'll be B0 or 18.4875 plus B1 which is 10.4163 times x. And we got those two numbers from right here. And we got those two numbers from right here. Now we're going to use this equation to predict y hat when x is 60. So all we have to do is put in 60 for x and crank through this calculation. Or we can get Excel to do that for us because, hey, I don't like doing calculations by hand. So there's our x variable. And our y hat is equal to, and I'm looking up here at the equation that we worked with. It's equal to 10.1463 times our x plus 18.4875. So our prediction for the labor costs is 627.2655 when the batch size is 60. Let's see if that makes sense on our graphic here. Here's where the batch size is 60 and going straight up, that is our estimate the y, which is approximately 625, which, when we did the calculations, pretty darn good. So 627 point, and it's three decimal places, so let's go ahead and drop that down because I don't like rounding, 0.266. Boom. So for this problem, we got the data into Excel, had Excel create the graph and the line of best fit. We extended the number of decimal places in the line of best fit. By default, it's three. We just extended it to one. How did we do that? We went into this, selected the number of decimal places to four, and then it spit it out more. And from that equation here, we were able to fill in the B1, the estimated slope, and B0, the estimated y-intercept. We interpreted the meaning of B0 and B1, B0 being the y-intercept, it's the estimated value of y, mean labor cost, when x, batch size, is 0. Doesn't make sense. And the other reason it doesn't make sense is because the range of batch size values is from 5 to 100, and 0 is outside that range. Because 0 is outside the range, we really should not be interpreting it. Similarly, we shouldn't interpret the idea of when the batch size is 110, because that's also outside the range of 5. 
We then took these numbers, the y-intercept and the slope, and put it into our line of best fit. And we used the line of best fit to predict the value of y when x was 60. So the expected labor cost when the batch size is 60 is $627.27. Rounded to three decimal places. So that's one. And now for problem two. Problem two is pretty darn easy. We're asked to calculate S squared and S. We're given SSE is 4.831. We're given a sample size of eight. So SSE. 4.831, sample size of 8, whoops, so the first thing we're going to calculate is s squared, remember that s squared from the book is just SSE divided by n minus 2, this is going to equal the sum of squared errors divided by n minus 2. And s is just the square root of s squared. So s is 0.805. I'm sorry, s squared is 805, and s is 897. And that's it. That's not bad for a medium difficulty. Note that question 3 is very similar, except n is 11, and the SSE is 202.2017. Problem 4, interpreting this table. That gets you through A and B. C requires that you to use that table and some additional information to calculate a value, dv. And d asks you to calculate these confidence intervals of 99 and a prediction interval of 99%. And to do those, check the formulas in the book. And that's it. Hopefully this was helpful for problems 1, 2, and 3 at least. Nice little overview of problem four. Should get you through A and B with no problems. C and D, you know where to look. Got any questions? Leave, leave them in the discussion room. Take care of yourselves. Hope you have a great weekend.